previous session we have started discussing time value of money. We have discussed the basics about time value of money and we have seen that there are different methods for calculating time value of money wherein we have seen compounding and discounting. We have also seen uh, the application of compounding method for single cash flow with the help of example in previous session and we have discussed the concept wherein we tried to calculate the future value of annuity and I have shared the formula for calculating future value of annuity in previous session wherein the future value of annuity that is Fn is equal to annuity multiplied by CVAF. So, in previous session we have seen what is CVF table, we have seen how this CVF table looks like. Now, on the screen you can see that how CVAF table looks like. So, CVAF table also looks similar to CVF table only, but this is compound value annuity factor table. Okay? That means you can see the values there were smaller, but in, in case of CVAF table the values are relatively higher because these are, these are the value, these are additive value, these the values are getting added when we are progressing in number of years. Similar to CVF table on left hand side uh, time periods are mentioned while on in rows the percentage or the rate of interest is given and we have to reach to some value by finding the intersection between time period and rate of interest so that we can apply this in our formula. Let us try to understand the concept of how we need to calculate future value of annuity and how we can use CVAF table with the help of this example. Now, Mr. X invested rupees 1 lakh annually. See the difference in the question. In the previous question, 10 lakh was invested and the value was seen at the end of fifth year. While in this question, in the very beginning, it is mentioned that this person, person X is investing this 1 lakh rupees annually with an interval of 12 months regularly at the end of each year. The cash flows are equal and interval regular. The interest he expects is 10 percent and the number of years of deposit is 5 percent. We need to find out the accumulated value at the end of each period. Okay? So, this person is investing 1 lakh rupees, so the annuity amount is 1 lakh rupees. For how long he is investing? He is doing this, this investment annually. For how long? For 5 years. So, our n is 5 year. What return he is getting? He is getting 10 percent return. So, our i will be 10 percent here. Okay. So, this is our CVAF table. Okay. What we need to see? We need to see the intersection of 10 percent and 4 years because why, why I picked the value 4 instead of 5? Because last installment of 1 lakh rupees will be paid at the end of 5th year only. Okay. When he is paying this at the end of 5th year at time 5 which is going to end and next day only he is going to get the whole amount. So, on the last value that he is in the last annuity that this investor is going to pay, he is not going to get any interest. Okay. But for the first, he is paying this amount at the end of every year. Okay. But if he had paid this amount in the beginning of every year, this value will be CVAF 10 5. That means, we will see it for 5 years. But since this investor is making the investment at the end of each time period. So, the value of CVAF will be uh, 10 for 4 years because for the last value he is not going to get any return. right? So, when we see this table CVAF for 10 4 will lie somewhere here and the value will be 4.641. Okay? Now, let us use this value in our formula. We have this formula where our future value is equal to annuity multiplied by CVAF for i n. Our A annuity value is 1 lakh, our CVAF value for 10 percent 4 years is 4.641. So, our future value of this annuity will be equal to 4,64,100. So, the conclusion will be if this investor is investing 1 lakh rupees at the end of each year for 5 years. At the end of 5 years, he is going to get 4,64,100 rupees in his hands. Okay? This is how the concept of compounding works. There is one more term, we call it sinking fund. 
for which we need the concept of future value or for which we need the concept of compounding. What is sinking point? So, in big factories, in businesses, what, what happens? Uh, they are using uh, huge machineries or something and these machineries depreciate with time. So, say after 10 years, they decide, they decide that every 10 years they need to replace the machinery. But at the end of every 10 year, it may be difficult for a business to extract a huge amount to replace those huge machineries. So, what they will do? They will separate a smaller amount every year for 10 years so that this machine at the end of 10 years this machine can be replaced easily without having any financial strain on the company. So, this amount that is separated every year will go, a fund is created will go to this fund and this fund is called sinking fund. So, basically a sinking fund is created from the fixed payment made each year each time after each uh, every time period to accumulate to a future sum after a specific period of time. It is exactly and similar to uh, the future value of annuity that we have created. But the only catch is in that case we have calculated the future value Fv which was available on left hand side of the equation. But here for us A is missing, our annuity is missing that means how much amount we need to separate every year. This is what we have to calculate. So, we will use the same equation where our Fn future value is equal to annuity A multiplied by Cv AF factor. But in this case, since A is missing, I am keeping A on left hand side and dividing future value Fn with Cv AF factor. Now, this 1 upon Cv AF factor is our sinking fund okay? or we call it sinking fund factor SFF for N and I. N is number of years, I is rate of interest. Okay. Let us try and understand with the help of uh, one example. Okay. So, a company wants to create a sinking fund for terminating bonds after 10 years. Now, it intends to accumulate rupees 90 lakh. So, after 10 years, this company needs 90 lakhs. Now, what amount should be deposited every year at 10 percent rate of return? So, if they are they are separating some amount and they want to invest it at the rate of 10 percent every year so that they can get 90 lakh at the end of 10 years. So, how much amount they need to separate every year? Okay. We just need to use same CVAF table here. Okay. So, uh, from this CVAF table, we again have to see the intersection of time period. So, here the time period is 10 years and the rate at which the, amount, the investment has to be made is again 10 percent. So, the intersection will be seen here and the value of CVAF that we are going to use here will be 15.937. Okay. Now, let us put these values in our equation where our annuity is equal to Fn future value divided by CVAF which is our 1 upon CVAF which is our sinking fund factor. Okay. So, uh, our future value that we need is 90 lakh which is divided by our CVAF value that we have extracted from the table that is 15.937. So, by dividing 90 lakh by 15.937 the value that we get is 5,64,723.4. So, this amount what will be the conclusion for this example? The conclusion will be rupees 5,64,723.4 has to be separated every year by this company for 10 years okay, so that they can get 90 lakh rupees at the end of 10 years. So, this is how we can calculate the value of annuity also and these were the examples of compounding. Okay. Now, let us move ahead with the concept of discounting. Okay. So, here what we need to do the future value will be given to us and we have to convert the future value into present value. Just like we have seen or we have calculated the uh, future value of single cash flow, we will see with the help of example that how present value of single cash flow can be calculated. Okay. So, the formula to create the present value of the lump sum to be received after some future time period will be exactly same wherein few uh, earlier what we were uh, we were doing where we were calculating future value which is equal to present value multiplied by 1 plus i raised to the power n which is our cvf factor but now we need p which is present value so we will divide future value by 1 
plus i raised to the power n. Now, this 1 upon 1 plus i raised to the power n, this can be written as 1 plus i raised to the power minus n also and this min 1 plus i raised to the power minus n can be termed as p v f for n and i. Now, p v f is our present value factor. Now, present value factor the, this value will always be less than 1 okay? because when we are converting future value into present value the value is less generally the time uh, the value of money will be less. Okay? So, we need to uh, get the value this p v f value from p v f table. So, this is the third type of table that I am showing you today. This is again available at the end of uh, any book of financial management. This is also similar to C V F and C V A F tab table wherein on uh, in columns we can see the time period or number of years and in rows we can see the percentage or the rate of return at which the investment has to be made. We have to look for the intersection value so that we can use this value for our calculations. Okay. Now, let us try and understand this with the help of one example. Now, Mr. X expects to receive 2 lakh rupees at the end of 3 years. What would be the present value if the rate of discount is 10 percent? Now, this person Mr. X is going to receive 2 lakh rupees at the end of 3 years from now. Okay. This amount is invested at the rate of 10 percent. So, what would be the value of this 2 lakh rupees today? This is what we need to calculate. Okay. We will use this PVF table we will see the intersection of what were the values we have to uh, our n is 3 here our i is 10 percent. Okay. So, p v f for 3 10 3 and 10 the intersection value which is equal to 0 0.744. So, our p v f value is 0 0.744. Now, we are going to use this value in our equation. So, the present value is equal to future value here the future value that this person is going to get is 2 lakh rupees multiplied by p v f factor our p v f factor was 0.744 and the approximate value that we will get after multiplying 2 lakh with 0.744 will be equal to 1 lakh 50 thousand okay so that means today if this person is investing 1 lakh 50 thousand rupees approximately at the rate of 10 percent for 3 years he is going to get 2 lakh rupees at the end of third year. Okay. So, this is how we use the concept of discounting for calculating the present value of single cash flow when the investment was made only once. Now, there may be a possibility or there may be case where the investment is made year after year when we have multiple cash flows. This may happen in case of uh, um, any business suppose I just now gave you the example of machinery somebody bought the machinery in the beginning of year which we consider time 0. Now, the machinery is get giving us return year after year. Okay. What we will do we will take the we will jot down the returns that we are getting from the machinery year after year say for 5 years. Okay. We will convert these values that we are getting for 5 years into the present value okay. and what we can do we can compare the return that we are we, we got from the machinery with the cost that we need to uh, you know invest into uh, while purchasing the machinery. If the cost is more than return then this this machinery was not of very you know profitable investment for us, but if the cost is less than the returns that we are getting. Okay, then yes, this machinery or this investment was a profitable machine uh, investment for us. This is how we use this concept of uh, discounting here. Let us try and understand this with the help of one example. Now, Mr. X, he will receive rupees 7 lakh after a year, 6 lakh after year 2 that is our uh, T0, uh, T2 T here, rupees 8 lakh in year 3 and rupees 10 lakh in year 4. Now, what would be the present value at 8 percent rate of return? So, this person is getting uh, some cash flows year after year that is 7 lakh at the end of first year, 6 lakh at the end of second year, 8 lakh at the end of third year and 10 lakh at the end of fourth year. Now, this person wants to know if I will convert these values into present value that means 7 lakh into present value, 6 lakh into present value, 
8 lakh into present value and 10 lakh into present value. At the rate of 8 percent, the what would be the total amount that I must have today? Okay. We will use again the same table, the PVF table that we have used earlier also. Okay. Here, but the only, only thing that we need to take care uh, here is earlier we were using intersection because we need only one value. But here the cash flows are coming year after year for 4 years. So, what we need to do? We have to take the values of first 4 years because the investment is coming back to us for first 4 years. So, 1, 2, 3, 4 for 8 percent. In this column, we will pick these 4 values to be used for our calculation. Let us see that how we can use these values. Now, we do not need to use the same equation, but we can, we can uh, solve this query with the help of a table. How we can uh, solve this with the help of table? Like see in this case, this is how we can present this case. So, in the first column, I have written year. So, for first year, the person in the second column, the amount is given. So, for first year the person is getting 7 lakh, for second year he is getting 6 lakh, for third year he is getting 8 lakh, for fourth year he is getting 10 lakh. Now, we use this PVF factor that we have picked up from PVF table at the rate of 8 percent. So, the first value in the first row was 0.926. You can check it from your books, from financial management books from PVF table. The first value for first year under 8 percent should be 0 0.926. Similarly, for second value for second year under 8 percent the value will be 0 0.857, the third value is 0 0.794, the fourth value is 0 0.735. Now, this, these are the values which are changing year after year because our amount is changing year after year. Okay. Now, we will multiply these amounts and the result is represented in fourth column. So, when I multiplied 7 lakh with 0.926, the value that I got is 6 lakh 48,200. Similarly, I will multiply 6 lakh with 0.857, the value that I got it 5 lakh 14,200. For third year, I have multiplied 8 lakh with 0.794 and the value is 6 lakh 35,200. And 10 lakh is multiplied with 0.735 and the value is 7 lakh 35,000. Okay. And by adding these 4 values, the 4 present values, I may get the total amount that person has to invest today will be 25 lakh 32,600. So, if, if the person is investing 25 lakh 32,600 today, so, year after year at the rate of 8 percent, year after year for 4 years, he is going to get 7 lakh, 6 lakh, 8 lakh and 10 lakh. This is one way of presenting the conclusion of this question. Another way is suppose this person has invested this amount. Um, suppose this person has purchased some machinery of rupees 25 lakh and this machinery is giving the return of 7 lakh in first year, 6 lakh in second year, 8 lakh in third year, 10 lakh in fourth year. Okay. So, that means overall the machinery is giving the return of 25,32,600 while our investment was 25 lakh. So, that means it was a profitable investment. Okay. And if suppose the machinery costed rupees 26 lakh, okay, but we are getting the return of 25,32,600, in that case it is a loss making investment. So, this is how we can use the concept of discounting for taking decisions. Okay. Just like we have calculated the future value of annuity, we can also calculate the present value of annuity when we are getting similar amount year after year in the form of return. Okay. So, the only difference that we need to do in the equation was we need to have P which is our present value is equal to annuity. Now, instead of future value, we will write A because again the same amount we are going to get year after year. And the value has to be multiplied by PVAF now instead of PVF because this is present value annuity factor, same amount year after year. Okay. Just like previous three tables, we have another table, we call it PVAF table, present value annuity factor table. Similarly, uh, years are given, percentages are given. Uh, after getting the value from the intersection, uh, we can pick the value by seeing the intersection of time period and percentage from this table also and we can use the value in our 
formula to get the value or to get the answer. Let us understand this with the help of another example. Now, Mr. Akash, he deposited rupees 70,000 annually for 5 years. He is depositing the same amount for 5 years annually, that means year after year. He deposits the money at the end of each year. What is the present value of NUT if the discount rate is 10 percent? What would be the value uh, if he will get if the discount rate is 10 percent? We will use PVAF table. The time period here we have is 5 years, the rate is 10 percent. So, the intersection of 5 years and 10 percent is this 3.791. So, our PVAF value is 3.791 that we are going to use in our equation or in our formula. Our formula was present value of NUT is equal to NUT value multiplied by PVAF factor for NNI. Here our annuity value is 70,000 because this investor is investing 70,000 year after year and our PVAF value was 3.791 that we have, uh, we, have, we have received from the table. Now by multiplying 70,000 with 3.791, we got this value 2,65,370 rupees. That means how we can conclude this? We can conclude it like this that if this person is investing 70,000 70, rupees year after year for 5 years at the rate of 10 years uh, at the rate of 10 percent, he is going to, he, he must be having or he um, has to invest or he has invested rupees 2,65,370 today and this is the present value of annuity which is 70,000 here in this case 2,65,370. So, this was another application of discounting method. Okay. So, this were the methods that we have used to judge the or to calculate the time value of money. You must be wondering where in real life, I just now gave the example that for machinery, for businesses, yes, these concepts are useful. But in day to day life also, the concept of time value of money is very, very useful to us. Suppose you are purchasing some pension plan for yourself. You need to invest today on a regular uh, interval so that some amount that you are going to get in future. For, for that kind of calculation, you can use this concept. Okay. And suppose you are buying some asset today and uh, you are not paying the, the, the amount in lump sum, but you want to pay this in EMIs. Okay. So, for calculating the value of EMIs, this kind of concept is applicable. One example I gave you uh, uh, during our discussion also, suppose a company want to invest in big assets. So, they use this kind of concept. When a business is entering into a new project or they want to invest in some kind of project. So, the concept of time value of money is used for that calculation as well. So, this is how in our day to day our regular working also, we we actually came across uh, come across this kind this concept of time value of money. Uh, but we never knew the background of it. But now that we know this, we can actually in implement this concept to have a clear cut calculations before making any kind of investments. Okay. So, so this was our uh, topic of discussion today. So, let us conclude today's session. So, today we begin the session by exploring the fundamental concepts of the time value of money, which is the principle that a sum of money today is worth more than the same sum in future due to its earning potential over time. Okay, we have seen that how the value of, uh, value of money changes with time. We discussed how this concept forms the basis of financial decision making. After that, we have explored about the risk return trade off. Okay, this, this is what uh, was represented with the help of time preference of money. This was a crucial financial management consideration or the, the concept which was very much which carries a lot of importance in financial management as a subject. We also examined how investors weigh the potential return of an investment against the level of risk involved and how this balance impacts their investment decisions. Then we moved further on to the methods of adjusting cash flows. We have seen the method of compounding wherein we converted present values into future values. 
we have seen another method the method of discounting where we have converted the future values of money into present value. We have also solved different examples for compounding and discounting. Starting from single cash flow to annuity to multiple cash flows, we have seen different type of examples for both the concepts here, compounding and discounting. Now to solidify this understanding, we worked through several examples of these two concepts, demonstrating how these concepts are applied in practice and in our real life. As we conclude today's session, I encourage you all to continue exploring these concepts independently and practice applying them to the real world scenarios. Understanding time value of money is a foundational to your financial success and mastering these concepts will serve you well in your future aims. So thank you for your attention for today. See you all in the next session on fundamentals of financial management very soon. Till then, happy learning.